Okay, this video is going to cover application management in central administration. So if you haven't done so and you're not, you haven't gone along with my video before about setting up a test environment, your process might be a little different. But uh, we went over how to set up a virtual machine in Hyper-V and then how to set up and install the SharePoint in a standalone installation. Uh, so anything I refer to here will be specific to those videos, but if you've got a system already set up or you have a test or a dev environment, you'll be all right. So under application management, basically you have four, uh, four topics that you can cover here. You have web applications, and the way I think of those is a web application is like a big shipping crate. It allows you to have um, a web application contains site collections okay which is the second item here but a site collection is basically a collection of sites a web application is a specific internet information services website and application pool specifically for a group of sites so it's another it's an organizational unit but it's also kind of an administrative um, grouping of all the application pool and and website and all the content and everything else is is kind of organized through web applications. So you can see right here I have SharePoint on port 80 is one of my web applications and we have SharePoint Central Administration is another one and that's on 5986. So that's the rundown on web applications. Alternate access mappings are alternate access URLs for these web applications. So if I wanted to change the way that um, SharePoint on port 80 is accessed, I can go in and set up an alternate access mapping for a URL if I wanted. So I could go in and select uh, SharePoint port 80 right here, and I could edit the public URL for that. I could say I want to make it SharePoint, uh, you know, simplified SharePoint or, you know, sp.simplifiedsharepoint.com. So I could change the internet version to, uh, you know, to that here. And basically, uh, it changes the URL, but keeps the rest of the URL like, you know, SP slash uh, as accounting, sorry, SP slash accounting would, um, if I accessed, if I'd set an alternate access mapping for simplified sharepoint.com slash accounting, it would bring you to this web application. I'll go further into that in another video, but just know that's where you can add a URL to a web application. All right. So let's talk about site collections. As I said before with web applications, site collections belong to web applications and they, co they contain groups of sites. So they're really top level sites. If you create one, it will ask you what web application you want to put it in and then ask you for a name and a description. And then you can go in and, and it will, you'll be able to access that site collection through the URL you specify and then create subsites and add content below that. Um, you can delete those here under delete a site collection. Um, you can set uh, confirm site use and deletion. What that does is allows you to set um, alerts to the site collection administrators to say, hey, your site hasn't been used in 30 days or 45 days um, because those sites tend to explode. You know, you have a site collection for marketing and the marketing creates a campaign subsite every, you know, every quarter so after three years you'd have 12 subsites and then 11 of them aren't even in use so you can set up a, um, a t sort of like a time limit on how long those sites can be active as long as they're active they'll continue to be open but if they are inactive for 45 days you can set it to send an alert or automatically delete them quota templates allow you to set a size limit on the sites uh, in the site collections so a quota template for, let's say, um, an IT department that wants to store, you know, configuration files and that type of thing, or maybe big PowerPoints that they use for presentations, you might want to give them more um, quota storage than maybe um, a risk management group that just has a couple of spreadsheets and, and uses the discussion board. Quotas and locks allow you to use these quota templates and set up um, how those are applied to sites below it. Site collection administrators are the users that are owners of a site collection. So for if you have a site collection for accounting, your CFO would be a site collection administrator. 
And that's that's a big if, as long as he's trained and it knows how to use it. Chances are it'll be you as in a SharePoint administrator. View all site collections lets you go in and select which web application you want to see and then view all the site collections below that. And then self-service site creation, um, the best way I can think of that is with the news feed or the SkyDrive. Uh, whenever a user goes to their my.contoso.com or goes to the web uh, web application that contains those my sites, if they've never been before, it'll create one for them. Uh, Self-service site creation is also for if I have a, a site um, a site collection and I want to create a subsite, it allows me to set that up and, and give users access to create a subsite under a site collection. All right, so service applications. Let's talk about these. Service applications are basically applications on the SharePoint platform. And they basically allow you to do operations pertaining to what SharePoint, what, what's running on the SharePoint platform. These include your access services, the app management, business data connectivity service. Um, what's another one? Search service application. These basically run all of the features in SharePoint. Um, and when you click on these, you'll usually be taken to the management page for those. And I'm gonna go further into those service applications and other videos. Again, this is just a brief overview of central administration. Service application associations, you can um, configure which ones are associated to which web application, okay? Feel free to click on any of these and go in and you know pause the video and take a look. I'm just giving you an overview of what they are in case you're not sure. Manage services on server. That basically lets you set up what services in SharePoint on the SharePoint platform are running on which server. So right now we have a standalone environment. So most, if not all of these are gonna be running on this single server. However, if we set up a tiered environment or a, a server farm, then maybe we would just want um, on our front end, we would just want the SharePoint foundation um, web application and, and web server role or service to be running on just the front end and the application service or the application server would run the business data connectivity service and the search service and that type of thing and that's where you'll get into performance tuning so maybe you know as the web front if this were a web front end we would turn off the SharePoint server search we would turn off the Visio graphics you know all, all these other ones that are really could be running anything except for maybe the distributed cache depending on how many servers you have in the farm that's really all you need to worry about for those. This just lets you configure what, what services you want to run on what server. So you can select the server here and then specify which services you want to run on them. So databases are where SharePoint stores its configuration and information. Um, whenever you, like if we created ours as a standalone, it created WSS content, which is our content database. You can always add another one and add a content database here. It'll ask you for information, what you want to name it. I will say anytime you need to create a database in SharePoint, you want to name it a specific way so that by looking at it, you could tell that it's whatever it is or what information it contains. In this case, if I wanted to create one, I would know if I went into my SQL manager, I'd say, oh, that's a test database. That's not important. But if it was for an accounting site, I would probably call it accounting and I would know, oh, don't mess with that database because that's the accounting database. But if you look um, whenever this thing creates the database name, it puts a GUID after it. Um, which is, stands for Global Unique Identifier. And those are very hard, unless you have a really good memory, <laughs> to know exactly what they're for. As far as um, the other options, you have, you have the ability to specify the default database server. Um, if you have clustering or availability groups set up on SQL Server, this might be something you want to pay attention to. This basically specifies the default database that SharePoint will connect to. If you have an availability group set up, you would put the name of your SQL availability group here. Um, if you're using um, clustering, you would put one of your main nodes here, or you'd set up a SQL alias. Uh, that's the kind of the best description I could put in there for that. And then the other one is configure the data retrieval service. This is for SOAP and XML. Um, and anything else like that. If you have any, um, it basically just lets you set permissions and configure some things for letting your farm connect to outside data sources. 
So that's pretty much the gist of everything you can do under application management in central administration. Again, this is just an overview. Um, I'm going to go deeper into things um, with further videos, but this is just part of the central administration overview and all the features within.